Hello lovelies. Today I'm going to show you how I made this reform dress. So this challenge was started by Fanny Federo on her blog and Instagram, which I'll link below. And Jewel Victoria and Opus LNA have recently done videos on it, which have really inspired me. I'll link them to share the love. The idea is this is a basic pattern from 1912 that uses very simple, almost medieval shift-like sewing techniques. It's all cut from one single piece of cloth folded, so the sleeves actually only have a bottom seam. The fabric then just drapes down the body and is only really given shape with a belt. So this was kind of like turn of the century casual Friday, right? It's the idea that it was a simple dress that women could wear without a lot of structured undergarments, so that if they were just at home or entertaining, or even maybe taking some exercise, they could be a little less restricted. Mm, so not the full skirts, petticoats, corsets, all of that. So yeah, that's why I like to think of it like casual Friday from 1912. So as you can see, it has an A-line skirt and then I will be cutting the sleeve along that top fold. So it's a very simple way of cutting, but I was trying to take a good amount of measurements just to make sure it would fit correctly. And to be honest, I made some errors. I cut this a little bit snugger in the top. As you can see that chest, I kind of squared off more like a fitted shift. So to add more ease and flow to the whole garment, I ended up using that underarm fabric to add some gores that start at the bust. Even with the gores, this ended up being quite snug over my chest and didn't have that blousy effect over a belt that some of the reform dresses have. But alas, they're all unique like snowflakes. Uh, so time to get ready to sew. I realized that most people never show how they thread their needle, so when I was starting out sewing, I just kind of figured out what worked for me. So especially if I'm sewing something that needs strength, I'll just take a length of thread, double it, and then push the loop through the needle's eye. Then take the end, which I've added a small knot to, slip it through that loop, and voila, I have a double strength piece of thread that I don't have to worry about nodding by the needle's eye. That's pretty handy. I don't know if that's correct, but it works for me. So right here, what I'm showing you is me adding in those gores. At the top of a gore, I like to use a back stitch just to make sure it's nice and tight and won't come undone. But then as I go down the length of it to the skirt part where it's not fitted to the body, I will sometimes transition to a running back stitch. And that seems to be strong enough so far. This fabric is a cotton and linen blend and a kind of herringbone weave. The texture is really beautiful, but I admit it is a little hard to see in the project, even when you're wearing it in person. The herringbone texture gives it a little more body. And my intention for this was for it to be more of a winter reform dress. While the sort of loose flowiness does lend itself all to summer, I just kept thinking this would be a lovely winter house dress. So I went with a little bit more wintry theme with my colors and embroidery patterns as well. As a complete novice when it comes to embroidery, I decided to make myself a sort of stencil for what I wanted to create. So I made myself this little mushroom because I wanted a large mushroom to be the centerpiece at the neck. And my big idea was that since I don't have any heat transfer pens and chalk tends to rub off, I couldn't make the design just in chalk and follow it. Although I do use a little chalk at the beginning. I tried pencil as well, but on the dark fabric it just didn't show up enough. So I marked the center point where I wanted it. Roughly, well, finished off the edges a little bit first. Those are paper scissors, don't worry. Then I roughly marked it out, ending up with the chalk. 
And then I decided that instead of just trying to follow chalk marks, I was going to thread mark this. So I took some white thread on just a small embroidery needle and I just loosely made a quick outline of my design in that thread. And then I will go in and fill it in with embroidery thread, remove the white thread, and then if I choose, sort of make a perimeter with the embroidery thread. So that was my big idea. It worked okay for me. I still can't say I'm an expert embroiderer, but a lot of embroidery content is incoming right now. If you're not into it, skip ahead a few minutes.
With my leaves and vines in place, it was time to add a few finishing touches. Now I could have left the sleeves as is and they would have fallen about mid forearm, or I could have taken them up as in the original pattern to about an elbow length sleeve. However, since I intended this to be more of a winter dress, I decided that the move would actually be to lengthen the sleeve. Since I had some uh, red cotton flannel left over from my cloak project, I decided that I would add a sort of bell sleeve made from that soft, cozy material at the end. As you can see, I am sewing with a sewing machine for the first time on this channel, and let me tell you, I'm still a little afraid of this thing, but thanks to uh, Aldi USA, I got it at half of retail price, so I really can't complain. Uh, and I believe it will make my projects be a little bit less injurious to my hands and wrists, which is always a good thing. Now, the reason why I decided to go with this bell sleeve look, particularly instead of just a normal cuff, is because this sort of artistic reform dress movement drew a lot of inspiration from medieval fashion. This had started in the mid 1800s with the pre-Raphaelite artists. They had a sort of obsession with the idea of, you know, knights and ladies and myths. And that greatly influenced the reform dress styles we see through that period and into the early 1900s. That idea of that medieval shift shape, that lack of support garment, it's a very medieval idea. As Jewel Victoria pointed out, basically pre-Raphaelites were medieval history bounding. Headcanon accepted. So I thought this bell sleeve gave that sort of pseudo medieval look that we see in pre-Raphaelite art and other places just before this time. So I thought that influence made a lot of sense. There are all kinds of ways you can create variety and that was my choice. Now, I did not have red thread for this project, so I decided to hand finish the sleeves because I thought that a tiny little whip stitch in the wrong color thread would be less intrusive and hurtful to the eye than a very strong machine stitch in black or white. So I went with just a simple white thread and caught a tiny line of little stitches just to get that cuffed up. And now the reveal. So as you can see, on its own, it's just quite a loosey-goosey kind of tunicky thing. It's not the most flattering or sexy, but it's quite comfortable. However, when you belt it, it does give it quite a nice shape. It emphasizes the drape of the gores. And I think it's actually quite cute, right? Now, Opus LNA, for example, made a lovely belt <laughs> to go on hers. I did not have any sort of buckle or anything Perhaps I will make a belt at some point, but instead I chose to go with this lovely embossed leather that I got at the Renaissance Fair last year and haven't had many occasions to wear. So overall, I'm quite pleased with it. I think it's very cute, although I still need to even out the hem and I may have cut it a little short, as you can see. There I am, pre-Raphaelite goddess. So just to conclude, a little cat content, her cleaning her little toe beans. I just want to say thank you for tuning in guys and upcoming on this channel into the new year there are going to be a few bigger projects that i'm going to be doing in parts i have decided to enter the foundations revealed 2021 competition so this is going to be my first competitive sewing costuming thing ever and i'm going to be showing you videos of the multi-part costume i'm going to be working on for that and I really hope you'll stick around and see what I get up to. If you want to see more, you can subscribe to stay tuned to see what I come up with for this competition. And either way, I hope you stay well. If you like this, throw it a like to let me know. Or just to let me know you like the cat. Bye.